Hello and welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I have a raging clue. And I'm Gary. And today we're going to review and discuss Clue, which released in 1985, based on the board game by Anthony E. Pratt, written by John Landis and Jonathan Lynn, and directed by Jonathan Lynn. Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis? Well, the story follows six strangers that have been invited to a mansion late one night. They have all been drawn there by Mr. Body, who is attempting to try to blackmail them all with little bits of information on them all. But Mr. Body will turn up dead and the mystery will deepen of who killed him, where they did it and what weapon they used. Why is the car stopped? It's frightened. Well, Cluedo, as it was uh, named in the UK, it yes. came out in 1949. Wow. And uh, it was definitely a hallmark in our living rooms, definitely one of the games oh, yeah. in there next to Monopoly yeah. and Mousetrap. <laughs> you know? and, uh, but John Landis was a fan of Cluedo, uh, as it was uh, known in uh, America. And he got us kind of a script together. He had the ideas together and he got most of the script together. And then apparently he shipped it around to many other writers to go, can you help me finish this? I just don't know how. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he that, went through yeah. writer after writer after. Apparently he even uh, had Anthony Perkins help him with the script <laughs> at one point. Yeah, Norman Bates. Or in the shower. Right, and helping to finish the script. Like, who done it? <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, it eventually went to Jonathan Lynn, who helped John Landis finish the script. And then John Landis was like, hey, uh, you want to direct it? Mm, yeah. And Jonathan Lynn was a stage director, done a lot of theatre work. And, uh, of course, he'd like to have the transition into film. Didn't necessarily, you know, option for Clue to be his first movie. Yeah, yeah. But then when John Landis goes, do you want to direct? Yeah. He literally said, you, the only thing you really can say is yes. Yes, yeah. And so he took on the role. And... Uh, Apparently, everyone had a good time making the film, mm. but they didn't have a pretty good time when the film came out. Uh, when it released in, in in the box office, it did not make its money no, back. It, it kind of made its money back, I guess, or broke even, really, uh, on home video. Yeah, yeah. But the critics at the time, they really hated it. And it's possibly because the film was advertised, kind of like having a theater gimmick mm. of, you don't know what ending you're going to get, because this ending has, there's multiples. Yeah, yeah. And I think in the cinema listings, it was listed as A, B, or C as the ending that you would get. And, like, the cynic in me thinks, like, uh, John Landis was saw the dollar signs that people would go and see the film three times. Yeah. Uh, so tripling the revenue, whereas, well, as we just found out, like, the box office said otherwise. Yeah, people yeah. just went, three endings? How about no endings? <laughs> you know? Uh, because that way you don't really have to care. <laughs> uh, but then, obviously, since the DVD and home video releases, all the endings have now been put and in one go. But we'll yeah. get to that when we get to yeah. the endings. I, I I watched this when I was younger. I mean, it must have been on BBC One at some point over the Christmas holidays or something. And I it's watched a PG it. movie as well. Yeah, so. and, and and I found it like I remember it being quirky and fun. And Tim Curry, you know, I I didn't know him at that point, but you know, then as the years go on, and I would see him in Legend, and I would see him in in It, and the Congo, and the Shadow, and just everything that I would see him in. I'm like, oh my god, Tim Curry is just so good. I need to go back. And so it was a couple of years ago, I, I said to the wife, like, like she bought Clue. That's what it's called now. You know, it's not Clue, though, it's Clue. She bought Clue and we were playing it with the family. And I was just like, man, I need to buy the DVD. So the next time we play this, I can put the film on in the background. Nobody cared. Nobody got it. They were just like, oh, we just want to play the board game. I'm like, the movie is the game and the game is the movie. No, no, nobody got it. But I got it on DVD, and like Gary said, it had all the multiple endings. So I was able to sit through and then watch it all. And I can kind of, I suppose, see... Like, why would you go back and re-watch the film when literally it's just the ending that's changed? You right. You've still got to sit through the fucking rest of it. Um, but it is so cool and quirky and, and, and fun. I mean, there's a whole host of... 
I, I almost said big name stars, but there's not that many big name stars in there. I wouldn't say huge names, but very popular names. Yeah, I mean, this was the same the year 80s. as Back to the Future. So yeah. it was a breakout year for Christopher Lloyd. Yeah. You know, I mean, he had a flop and then he had a mega hit at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then there's also um, Michael McKean. And I was just like, man, he looks so young, yeah. you know, in this role. But uh, a fantastic actor. But yeah, and I didn't even realise it was him in this until this rewatch. I was like, oh my god. Man, you're telling me. I always believed that uh, Susan Sarandon was Miss Scarlet. And oh, it right. out it's Leslie Ann Warren. Yeah, and actually she's fantastic in <laughs> this as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and the film starts off really quite funky. I mean, you know, stormy night. Uh, uh, it's dark. There's a mansion up on the hill. And here comes Tim Curry in his car driving up. You know, he, he throws a couple of bones to the guard dogs outside and then and then he accidentally steps in dog shit. And then he walks in and his interaction with like the maid, Yvette, and the, the cook, you know, it, it's it's weird, um, but it's quirky because the, none of them really should be there. They've all just been kind of made to turn up. And so none of them really know why they're there or what the connections are just yet. But when the guests start turning up, Wadsworth, the butler, is already there to say to them, nope, nope, I don't need your name. I don't need to know who you are. This is your name for tonight. You're Miss Peacock. You're Miss White. You're Colonel Mustard. You're Miss Scarlet. You're Mr. Green. You're Professor Plum. And so if you've not played Clue, I'd love for the kind of to know how you see this movie. Of, <laughs> like, what the fuck is going on? For me, I'm like, oh, the cards are getting into place. Oh, you yeah. You know, they're yeah. getting their little notepads ready. <laughs> yeah, well, they all get given, well, they were all sent letters to invite them there. Yeah. And uh, for me, this is where the pacing of the film, it, it, it drops to a snail's pace. Now, right. granted, we had some kind of, some quirky comedy and yeah, some visual yeah. gags early on. But then once the whole cast are there... For me, it does slow down quite a bit. Now, because all of the characters, when they talk to each other, like, oh, yeah, we're not allowed to reveal who our real identities are. Yeah, yeah. It's a secret. We're going to use these pseudonyms. Yeah. I was like, well, of course. I mean, it is based off the board game, so they're all based off their, their colours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The characters that they were. And interestingly, all of their cars as well are also the same colour as, as who they would be. Oh, wow, well, yeah. So I would say the attention to detail and capturing from the game to the movie, like, they didn't need to, really, but they did. And the fact that all, yeah. of, the, all of the rooms in the mansion are also laid out like they are in the board game. And even the, the foyer, the tiles on the floor yes. are just like the squares of the of a board. But so the, the, the detail there was, was, was really quite nice. I have to say as well, though, it's not an actual house or an actual mansion. It was an entire set that they built wow, nice. for this, including then they could also get the secret passages, yes, yeah. which would also later on in the movie they'd explore. And they do connect the same way they do in the board they game. They do, yeah. So I was like, that's another nice little thing that they've done here. But so all of that aside, I'm still just like, so who are these people? And it it was the moment where they were all sat loudly sipping soup <laughs> that my attention started to wane a little bit. I was like, and this is early on in the film, but this would, for me, unfortunately, lead into boredom and eventual tedium. Yeah, I can, I can kind of see that, but then I suppose... Because I was waiting for the plot to happen. Like, I know Clue. I know it's about a but, murder. Well, that's it. So that's... I'm like... When's when's the thing going to happen? I, I think that that as well is is where the movie can be, you know, marmite for some, you know, and and some people love it and some people hate it because, like I said, I was I was all excited to watch this, you know. I, I've always enjoyed Clue. I, I've enjoyed playing the board game as well, and it's always surprised me that the the movie is so close to what the game could be in film form. You know, we've always said that, oh, I'd love this game to go on to film. And it never really works. They, they fucked it up with Tomb Raider. They fucked it up with Resident Evil. They fucked it up with fucking Doom. They're probably going to fuck it up with Metal Gear Solid. I mean, fucking Battleship has got nothing to do with the fucking board game. You know? But for me, I was just like, well, that's where I always go back to Clue. Because of the little, the, the, the little things they put in the movie. Yeah, it's not slapstick comedy like... Like Naked Gun or Police Academy, but then again, like like you said, you know, in a weird way, most comedies don't follow a plot like that, unless it's an Adam Sandler movie and the plot is slapped in your face, so fucking obvious that you're just you might as well just not watch the movie. With this, yes, they have to slowly build it up because more so than being a comedy, it's a mystery. 
Yes. Yeah. But what I but this also would tie into the multiple endings is that when I have a mystery and if I'm the audience and I'd like a bit of participation in as I'm watching the film play out, yeah, figuring out the clues and figuring out who's the killer and where where it happened and when it happened. But with a film with three endings, that's a film that also doesn't know what its ending no, is. I, I so know. as a mystery, it's fundamentally broken. So that's, that's it. There's a few things that come up towards the end of the movie where they go, oh yeah, and this happened and this happened. And you're like, hang on a minute. If I go back and rewatch, and re-watch that, <laughs> that isn't the case because they are just trying to shoehorn in this ending to make it fun because much like the game. But... We have we have uh, Lee Ving turn up who plays Mister Body. <laughs> Come on, it's the dead Mr. body that they find it's at the start the of the game. Mister <laughs> Body. He was actually the frontman for is it Fear the band? Fear? Uh, I I don't know. Yeah, maybe yeah. if we if we ever sit, then yeah, okay. <laughs> and um, he sits there. He's bought the, all the information. Apparently, yes. Yeah. Yeah. He, because we, we're also told that everybody is gathered here because they are all being blackmailed. Yeah. By someone. Yeah. And we find out that it's Mr. Body who's the one who's been blackmailing everyone. And so obviously, he'd be the one that everyone would want to kill. So they're not have to be paying off all this blackmail. And there's a moment where they all stand up and confess, like, what it is <laughs> yeah. that they're being blackmailed for. Yeah. That sounds like a confession to me. In fact, the double negative has led to proof positive. I'm afraid you gave yourself away. Are you trying to make me look stupid in front of the other guests? You don't need any help from me, sir. That's right. And you're just like, you listen to some of them, and some of them are a little bit harsh. Like Miss Scarlet, she's the she's the head of uh, an escort service, and she, you know, gives or 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 has women go to certain men, and so I think it's. Uh, Colonel Mustard, who's utilised those services, and it turns out a vet, the maid, is actually one of the girls. You know, Miss Peacock, her husband's a senator, and I'm pretty sure he's been going to see Miss Scarlet's girls at some point. As <laughs> She's well. taking bribes. Yeah, to, to, to so that she, her husband can get into the politics business. Like, um, Christopher Lloyd's character is a professor, isn't he? But he's been taken advantage by sleeping with his patients. Yeah, yeah. And the patient will turn up at that. That bit was weird with the patient right. turned up at the door. It, yeah. it's, it's, I mean, we'll cut to it now because it's just out of the blue and odd. <laughs> yeah. I am your singing telegram. I'm your dancing, singing, telegram, delivery, kapow, shop kapow. dead. <laughs> like, okay. So, like, out of context, it's kind of quite funny. Yeah. But in the moment of the film, I'm just like, yeah, I'm like what? <laughs> like, <laughs> what? What was that? Now, it's because, like, throughout the course of the film, none of the main characters in Clue die. No. Right? No. So, the film keeps introducing more characters into the film that can die. Yeah. <laughs> because after Mr. Body has, well, become the body. Yeah. But then it was like, well, was it a gunshot? Was what? What killed him? There's no bullet wounds. That's it. That's it. The lights go out. You hear a scream and things smack. I mean, I think it's each one of the weapons being used. Right. Um, and then he it, they they bring the lights back on, and after they'd heard the gunshot, they flip them over and they realize actually no, there's there's no there's no blood there. There's no bullet hole. Um, and so they're all really confused. And the fact that he's brought all the weapons for them. That's right. Know. They all open their own boxes with their own weapon. Yeah. And he's just like, Mr. Body at one point is like, well, I'm out of here because I know what's going to happen. And was just like, you can't leave. I'm, I'm, you're, you're stuck. And then he becomes the body. So, you know, the, the idea behind the game is pushing this thing forward now. You know, the comedy, I will admit, drops off in certain places to allow the mystery to unfold. But the mystery won't hold your attention that well unless you're really willing on wanting to watch a movie based on Clue. Um, but the, like the weirdest thing is, is that they race off to the kitchen, don't they? Yeah. To, to speak to the cook. Because obviously, you know, she must know what's going on because we've got a body now. And they rush into there and she's been stabbed in the back. And then we get the comedy escapades as they try and bring the body around. Because yeah. like, let's pile all the bodies out of here because I like the kitchen nice and tidy. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's like, come on, Wadsworth. <laughs> but then Mr. Body is gone. Right. And you're like, and that's the part that gets me. I'm like, oh, I don't know. What, why? Why did he get up? Why didn't they just kill him at the start? Well, he pretended to be dead because they thought he was dead. But he's going to turn up dead. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, we've got to pad this movie out somehow. <laughs> that is true. I'm sorry. My bad. My bad. <laughs> because now we've got to we've got to have the investigation where everyone wanders off into different rooms and eventually they end up drawing matchsticks to decide who gets paired up with who yeah. and who wanders off where. And that's where we just have like the mini gags that happen as they go wandering through. Uh, the secret passages as well. Yeah. You know, we get the other one where it's like, I'm just going to leave. And then we see the dogs. We reminded that the dogs are still outside. The dogs are kind of rest and the... evil. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but I mean, it, that's it. This, this <clears throat> film is so filled with all of those tropes, you yeah, know? Yeah. 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 Uh, but it, it, with it being a horror thriller mystery with its tropes, but being comedy, it's kind of parody. Yeah. But at yeah, the same yeah. time, like it, for me, it just didn't quite gel right. Now, I, I appreciated some of the sort of uh, physical humor, mm. but I really did like some of the dialogue, some of the interplay between the characters because, like, no one was laughing at each other's kind of quippy, funny lines. No, no, yeah. And so they played it very straight. Yeah. Which, which kind of works, and but it also just makes it very odd. Yeah. You know, in terms of like a viewing experience, it feels almost like a stage play, or I, I don't know. It's yeah. Just, it had, I, there's just a, a huge disconnect from reality. I totally get that. Like, because initially you'd think, oh, it's a comedy. By about 35, 40 minutes in, you might not have laughed. So by that point in the movie, you would be questioning, is this a comedy? Why am I not finding it funny? But as Gary just said, some of the some of it is really just parodying other comedies. Some of it, some of it is, you know, making fun of other mysteries. Like like I kept thinking of Ten Little Indians, uh, the movie from 1965, which is about ten people who go to a house and they all keep getting killed off one by one and the mystery is trying to work out who's killing them and who's next. Um, and so I'm like, oh, I can kind of see that maybe Jonathan Landis or, or Jonathan Lynn, you know, watched that and got the idea of getting all the people into the house setting them up for the dinner, making them as serious as they can while also making fun of some of their jobs and some of their back histories while also trying to keep the flow of Clue going. Because, I mean, we've got to admit, the, the idea of the board game Clue doesn't get lost in the movie once. It's true, yeah. You know, yeah. you don't ever go, oh, why are they here again? You're, you know, you're always like, I'm... I, I'm watching these people. I'm invisible to these six people running around this house, you know, killing people off. Like, like you get the fucking, um, the deputy from Jaws turn up. Right. <laughs> He's well fucking lost. <laughs> A car broke down. Can I use the telephone? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. I was like, well, you are fodder. Like, <laughs> and the way they bring him in, they like, they close the door and they're like, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah, you can come in. And then we're going to lock you into the room as well. <laughs> That's not weird as well. Anyway. But at the same time, he also turns around at one point. And he goes, yeah, the police will be here in 45 minutes. And it's like, oh, well, film's on a timer then. Yeah, yeah. So we've got to solve this mystery before the police get here. I, who called the police? I'm I, I, man, well, that kind of goes in towards the end, one of the endings, depending on which ending you mm, get. That's true. So we've got, like I said, the deputy from Jaws. He's gone into one room and he gets killed off. But then we do end up getting the visit from the police officer as well. And, and he comes in and, you know, he's just like, oh, can I use your phone as well? And and uh, Tim Curry's like, oh, you can use the one in there. Oh, no, you can't. You can use the one in there. Oh, no, you can't in there. Because they've, go the <laughs> they've just got bodies everywhere. You've got Mr. Body who's been killed by a candlestick. You've got the, the, the cook who's been stabbed in the back. You've got the motorist who's been hit in the head by a lead pipe. The cop gets locked in a room and somebody sneaks up behind him and hits him in the head with a wrench, I believe it is. Well, we still, don't forget, we've got the, the facade where he's like, I want to explore the house. Yeah. And so the others take the corpses into the other <laughs> room do. and start making out with them. Yeah. If you would tell me I'm the only one that you love, like be Just to pretend if you've got him in the corner with the other lady behind him <laughs> doing the arms. You've got the other guy, they've put, a, they've put the drink in his hand and the hat over his head. This guy's dead drunk. I was <laughs> like, oh! That's what I mean about the wanting to be super clever or funny with the, yeah. with the dialogue. But, like, it either works for you or it doesn't. But, yeah. Yeah. This man's drunk. Dead drunk. Dead right. <laughs> But the, but the cop ends up getting taken out with a wrench. Yeah. Uh, Yvette, the maid, she gets strangled by somebody. And then, like we said, like we showed you earlier, the singing telegram girl turns up. 
and she just gets <laughs> shot, you know? <laughs> and so towards the end of the movie, yeah, you could get to the point where, like, I, I think the movie was trying to keep the flow going that it could be any of them. Yeah, yeah. You know, because yeah. all the weapons have been used. All of them have motives to do this. I mean, the motorist turns out be, to be the ex-driver of the colonel. You know, Yvette works for Miss Scala. The telegram girl turns out to be one of Christopher Lloyd's sexual patients. The cop even the cop even says at one point, oh yeah, I was on the phone to J. Edgar Hoover because it's set in 1954. Right. Um, and you're like, J. Edgar Hoover's fucking rigging this random fucking house? What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? So each... Purse, each stranger that turns up at the house has a connection to one of the people that's already at the house. And so, like Gary said, you're either going to like it or not. I, I kind of like it that it just keeps the interplay of the game going. That's what the idea they're trying to sell you. It may not completely work because, as we, as we said at the beginning, you'll get one of three endings. Right. You know, um, there is one where Miss Peacock turns out to be the culprit. There's one where Miss Scarlet turns out to be the culprit. And then there's one that turns out it's the butler that did it. <laughs> and I, I, I do think that's a really unique idea. It's really difficult to pull off in a cinema. I mean, you imagine going to see Avengers and they're like, oh, by the way, we've given you multiple endings. So you're going to have to sit through Avengers <laughs> two more times to see who dies in the other endings. You're like, oh, fuck, yeah, I'll wait till it comes out on DVD, mate. Right, yeah. Or streaming, you know. I, I, I think I probably would have been pretty unsatisfied with any of the endings on their own. I actually think having all three endings play back to back right, yeah. actually works in the film's favour. And I also think the final ending that the film shows is the definitive ending, whereas the two that it shows before it are just like the game Clue. There's multiple endings. So like, But then if somebody guesses wrong who they think done it, where they did it, and what with, if they're yeah. wrong, the game carries on. Yeah. So just like the film, uh, you know, they guessed wrong, and it's like, well, that's how it could have gone, and well, it could have been that, <laughs> yeah. but this is how it really happened. This is how it went, yeah. I mean, we got, well, the, f the first one with Miss Peacock, she leaves and the evangelist um, who turned up trying to sell Bibles, he turns out to be a cop and he arrests her yeah. and everybody else kind of gets away. Um, when it's Miss Scarlet, it turns out that Wadsworth, Tim Curry's character, actually is working with the cops and the, the phone call from J. Edgar Hoover was for him, and he knew the whole time. He yeah. was, and so he had orchestrated all of this to get yeah. them to incriminate themselves as well so that the police could turn up and just arrest them all. Yeah, and I, I mean, that's kind of cool, because it, like I said, it's different to the first ending. At least they tried something deeper. With the third one, it turns out that Wadsworth, the butler, is the killer from the start, and he's actually missed the body, and he's been blackmailing them all. But it then turns out that Michael McKean's character is actually secretly an FBI agent who infiltrated the house and hit the phone call from J. Edgar Hoover was actually for him. The signal that the cops would be nearby and that he could arrest all the people. And he kills Wadsworth, I think. He That's shoots right, him, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. Shoots him fucking dead. <laughs> he hadn't killed anybody throughout the whole movie and he made that clear. He's like, I didn't do it, I didn't do it, I didn't do it. You got blood on your hands. Yeah. And then he fucking <laughs> blam, shoots Wadsworth. I'm like, oh, my fucking... I like well, I kind of like that ending, you know, because it gives yeah. more screen time to Tim Curry. I think Tim Curry just needs all the fucking screen time. Oh hell yeah! I mean, he <laughs> is the star of the show. He yeah. really, uh, he is the most energetic one of them all. He's the first character we meet. He's there throughout nearly every sequence in the film. Yeah, and we just love Tim Curry. Love so Tim Curry, it's just yeah. great to see him uh, doing doing anything. <laughs> well, Ian, what were your favorite scenes from Clue? Um, I had I had a few. I mean, I did kind of like a few of the scenes with a vet in. Um, there's something about Maid's outfit. Oh, what was that? I'm not going to lie. She's just very attractive. <laughs> like, there's a couple of sequences where she's running up and down the stairs. I was just like, the director had fun. Okay, no, no, we need you to redo that shot again. Well, interesting bit of trivia for you. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, is that uh, apparently that role was originally being uh, considered for Jennifer Jason Lee, uh, Demi Moore, and Madonna. But, wow. but yeah. Colleen Camp came into her audition for Yvette wearing that maid's outfit. Oh, yeah. And the director just went, mm, yeah, you're hired. <laughs> you're hired. <high. laughs> now, it's rumoured, like, I don't know if that's for true. I know that those other uh, yeah, actresses were, yeah, yeah. Were, were considered. 
but that's just one of the stories that I heard was that she was fully prepared for this role. Yeah, I mean, Jennifer Jason Lee, she's a pretty serious actress. Yeah, I mean, Demi Moore as well. Yeah, well, yeah, but can you imagine the girl from um, I Know What You Did Last Summer running up and down those stairs? Jennifer Love Hewitt. Oh, man. <laughs> um, I, do like, I do like the sequence where Yvette has been killed off and all of the people run down to find her body and the body of the dead cop and they're not phased by it. Because they've already come across like three dead bodies up to that point. <laughs> so they're all kind of a bit tired now. That oh, for God's sake. Uh, what made me laugh is imagine if that had been like that in the thing. You know, like they've seen all this horrible stuff. And then they watch Norris's head come off and they're like. <sighs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, Wadsworth's explanations. As I said, I love Tim Curry. And. When you just have him in the zone doing what he does best, which is just talk really, really fast. You know, he just pulls it off. It, all three endings, he does his explanation and he'll, he'll go in depth. And it, and it really does take the focus because the focus has been on all the other characters throughout the rest of the movie. It now puts the focus straight on him and he breaks it down for you and explains it and says, well, this happened and that happened. Blah, blah, blah. And... A lot of the times you could sit there and go, oh, I didn't see that. But I think a lot of the times you won't see it because that's how the movie's made. Maybe I missed it. Maybe there are little signs in the background that you could say, actually, in that happens. Um, but yeah, no, those were just my major favorite scenes. I, I really did enjoy the entire movie. And like Gary said, that you know, there are certain moments where the script is playing that you go, Oh, that's brilliant. Like the double negative yeah, section. Yeah. I you know, I thought that was just really cool play Is it on the one words. one two one <laughs> or one two one one one. <laughs> like shut up. <laughs> like, yeah, there's some great little comedic lines. And they do go so fast and because they don't pause to laugh yeah. at the funnies you as could well. Just, it just keeps going. Yeah. It just yeah. Yeah. Uh uh. There was only one shot that got the chandelier. That's one plus two plus one plus one. Even if you were right, that would be one plus one plus two plus one, not one plus two plus one plus one. Okay, fine. One plus two plus one. Shut up! But yeah, I mean, that that is literally most of my favourite scenes is just the quick snappy dialogue moments uh, and just just the, the comments that sometimes that are made that you just... It takes you... Like, they've already carried on the scene and your <laughs> yeah. brain's still just going, wait a minute, is that what I just heard? <laughs> just For that. instance, uh, there's, a, there's a line where somebody asks Mrs. White, like, how many husbands have you had? Yeah. And she goes, what, mine or other women's? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, and, but they carry on. You just like, wait, wait, wait a minute, Did and because we find that? out that she's murdered five of her previous husbands, yeah, yeah, or other women's husbands. I don't know how Some, many of those she's killed. <laughs> something to do with decapitation and castration. I didn't want to go into it. Yeah, mm. yeah. <laughs> There's also another scene with her as well where uh, there's the only one ad-libbed moment in the film. It's a film that you'd actually think had would have more, right? But it's a sequence where she's like flames, flames on the side of my face, and you're just like. <laughs> <laughs> what is and then the scene just carries on Wordsworth just takes them into the next room and the scene carries on you're yeah. like what was that <laughs> what the hell was that yeah. much it it the it flame flames flames on the side of my face breathing <laughs> it's, it's silly but you're just like well speaking of silly I think that the, the silliest moment the moment that did make me laugh is when uh, Wordsworth is standing there and he's like I'm not shouting Okay, maybe I'm shouting, and then the candlestick falls from above him, lands him on the head, and, <laughs> and falls over. So, okay, yeah. Tim Curry doing physical comedy. I'm, I'm just going to get a laugh. Yeah, it's for brilliant. sure, for sure. Uh, there's another, again, just another throwaway line where he's just like, "Make a long story short," and somebody goes too late, and again, <laughs> yeah. they just carry on. It's just like it's just the punctuation of the lines, the yeah. deliveries. It's really good. Apparently, behind the scenes. Michael McKean uh, had to rally all the actors together every time and calm everybody down and go, right, remember, for the characters that we're playing, this is reality. So let's get ourselves back into this mindset. Yeah, because yeah. Because they were obviously just all comedians, all having fun making the movie, and so they had to have that adjustment, yeah. you know, when going in on camera. But I think he 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 certainly probably would be the... the I mean, I might be wrong, but he, he like he went on to uh, this is Spinal Tap. Yes, you know he'd go into short circuit Better Call two, Saul. Better Call Saul. You know he 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 knew comedy. Yeah, you know and knew how to play it. Where the rest of them, you know, like the woman who played Miss Peacock, she was in Private Benjamin. You know, and a few of the other characters, they they um, 
I, I, I didn't see much in their, like, their filmography to say, oh, yeah, they're a standout comedian. They would know their points. So maybe that's why some of their lines y you didn't catch because they were delivering it so dry that you were like, like you said, huh? what was that funny? Was that <laughs> supposed to be funny? Where he, you know, Michael McKean is just on it constantly. You know, he is he is probably the funniest person maybe next to uh, Christopher Lloyd in the movie. But then Christopher Lloyd only has kind of situational stuff. I think it's Michael McKean who drops soup all over Miss Scarlett's dress as well. And That's right, yeah. clean it up. And yeah, she's like, yeah. watch it. Yeah, he, he did make me laugh as well when uh, when the cook bangs the gong. He yeah. just throws his drink in her face pretty much. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's natural reaction. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, just literally uh, any of those like snappy dialogue moments. There was there was quite a few of them, um, but yeah, they weren't belly laughs. But yeah. they were. I just liked how clever they were written and how well the actors pulled them off. So yeah, almost kind of black comedy ish. Yeah, in parts, yeah, in it was very dark yeah. comedy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, Ian, do you recommend Clue? I do, but I will agree with my friend here that. It might be a little bit dated in certain places and you might not get it on the first time round. And that might actually catch you off guard with the film. You might watch it the first time and go, I didn't enjoy that. That wasn't funny. I'm never watching it again. But in my experience, I mean, I must have watched this film about five or six times and I'm still spotting things that I, I, I'm like, how the fuck didn't I spot that before? Like, like. For the review, it only dawned on me that, yeah, all the secret passages connect all the rooms that connect the rooms as they are in the game. You know, all the weapons are used to kill off people who have just turned up in the movie. And so it nods as closely as it can to the game because that's what it's also trying to do. But then it's also trying to be a dark comedy, a black comedy, whatever you want to call it. And sometimes it just might not hit you in the funny bone when you most exp when you think that it should but there will be little moments where you go oh that was pretty good i didn't see that coming that was actually funny oh i can't believe they said that tim curry is just on phenomenal form as he always is with this film and as the lead the butler running most of the other characters through this mansion i think that absolutely works the the other actors and actresses they play their characters I suppose as you kind of imagine the characters from the game would be played by. You don't go too much into their history. You don't find out what happens to them after. It's literally just the situation that they find themselves in. And depending on the ending that you go for, it depends on how you feel that the ending of the movie, you know, went and how it made you feel. I, I totally recommend it. But at the same time, if you don't want to watch it, then fuck it. Play the game. <laughs> <laughs> right on. <laughs> um... I'm honestly having my reservations and having some difficulties in giving this my recommendation. Uh, this wasn't really very funny or engaging, and I found it mostly boring to the point of tedium. Uh, so, yeah, it doesn't get my personal recommendation. You know, at first, I was enjoying some of the visual gags and the few clever and witty dialogue exchanges, but then the pace slowed to a crawl, the plot never really thickened, and the joke started to tire. For me, you might have a different experience, as we always said, comedy is subjective. You know, but the whole film f felt like parody. You know, it was probably intended, though, as they included all the tropes, you know, used to, to varying effect. You know, the broken down car, the stormy night, creepy mansion, secret passageways, hidden identities, panicked guests, and then the murder mystery. You know, a lot of what happens uh, in my memory after that is just the awesome Tim Curry running around like a crazy person yeah. and Colleen Camp's heavy, heaving bosom. <laughs> That's all I remember now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but I will say, though, Leslie Ann Warren, she had a few standout moments and she was probably my favorite character. She really stood out with some great line delivery and uh, some awesome expressions. The set was fantastic, from the decorations, the furniture, and the attention to detail and mirroring the locations from the game. The music was also pretty suitable, although, again, it's repetition towards the end, tedious at times. Mm, yeah. So, yeah, I, I recommend this to those that like screwball comedies and to those that just adore Tim Curry, you know, or are just curious about a nearly forgotten, now classed as a cult classic film. It's comedy, so it might be just perfect for you or 
almost entirely forgettable. The film that makes a scene of the crime. Thanks for watching off the shelf reviews. What room is this? Search me. Okay. Get your mitts off me.